Hey guys, welcome to All Adrenics. I'm Gregory and today we are going to take a look on the neutralization of transistor capacitance, a technique that can increase the amplifier bandwidth. Let's go! Here we can see the neutralization technique in use. We have an amplifier here, a common emitter amplifier that has a bandwidth of 50 meg here in the first marker. If I turn on the technique, we are going to see an improvement on the bandwidth. And now the bandwidth here in the second marker is more than 100 MHz. The bandwidth of this stage has more than double. This technique was used a lot in the vacuum tube era and in the first days of transistors. In that time, transistors and vacuum tubes were expensive and engineers needed to take the maximum gain possible from each amplifier stage. The neutralization technique uses a feedback capacitor that feedbacks part of the output signal to the input of the amplifier, neutralizing the dominant pole of the amplifier, increasing its bandwidth. Here in the prototype, Build to show you guys, I placed a switch where we can turn on and turn off the neutralization so we can see the difference in the spectrum analyzer. We are using this Rigel spectrum analyzer because it has the tracking generator where we can generate a signal synchronized with the sweep of the spectrum analyzer. In this way, we can measure the S21 parameter, that is the transmission parameter of the amplifier responsible for the gain of the state. So, what we are seeing here in the screen is the gain versus frequency of the state. Using two traces, we can see the difference of the amplifier with and without the neutralization technique. We saw that the bandwidth more than doubled. Let's go to the whiteboard to understand how it works and why the neutralization technique can increase the bandwidth. The bandwidth of a common emitter amplifier is mainly limited by the dominant pole generated by the Miller effect. Let's understand what it is. The Miller effect is the amplification of the base collector capacitance of a transistor. The transistor has a base to emitter capacitance, a collector to emitter capacitance, and a base to collector capacitance. We call feedback capacitance the base to collector capacitance. So we have the feedback capacitance here. The voltage gain of this amplifier will also amplify this capacitance when seen by the input. Think with me, guys. Let's think we have a small wiggle of voltage, a small increase in voltage here in the base of the transistor. This increase of voltage here is a small signal, is the input signal, so let's think it is a small increase upward. We know that this stage is an inverting stage. So with an upward input, the output will go downward. And the voltage swing here at the output will be the voltage gain larger than the input. So a small positive signal at the input will generate a large downward negative delta at the output. So guys, think with me, the capacitance is in between the two voltage deltas. The voltage seen by the capacitor the voltage across these two nodes here is AV larger than the input voltage. From an input perspective, this capacitance here is multiplied by the stage voltage gain. Because any variation in voltage in the input will generate a current in this capacitance that is AV larger. So for any small input signal, we have here a difference of 1 plus AV. It's clearly to see it because if we have an unitary small impulse here in the upward direction, we have a larger AV impulse to the other direction here and the difference over the capacitor is 1 plus AV. So the current entering the input node will be 1 plus AV larger and the capacitance here seen by the input signal is 1 plus AV larger. This effect is tremendous, guys. Think about it. If this stage has a voltage gain of 10, the capacitance, this capacitance that, it, let's say it is 2 picofarads, will be seen from the input as 20 two picofarads, more than a 10 times increase. This is why this effect dominates the frequency response of the amplifier. The neutralization technique will neutralize this effect. From a theoretical perspective, we are going to take a sample of the output, run it through a buffer, inverting buffer amplifier, and we are going to feed back the signal to the input 
using a capacitance very similar to the base collector capacitance of the transistor. In this manner, we can neutralize the effect because now all the capacitance current needed entering here the base collector capacitance is supplied by the output. It is a bootstrap technique. A small signal in the input will generate a larger signal at the output, but now we are taking this large signal, inverting it, so we have a larger signal in the same direction here at the input and this large signal that has energy that came from the output will help the input signal to drive the transistor. So the current needed now is supplied by the output. In this way we can neutralize the effect of the capacitance multiplication. One drawback of this technique is that the stage can oscillate because we are using positive feedback. With today's technology where transistors are achieving a higher and higher frequency, it's a better move to use a transistor with higher transition frequency. Nevertheless, it's important to understand the technique having it in your toolbox because it can be useful. The transistor is in the bottom of the circuit. Here is the output transformer that drives the output as we are going to see in the circuit diagram. And the red winding is the feedback signal we are taking passing through this variable capacitor to inject at the input node, neutralizing the effect. I place the switch in series with the capacitance so we can turn it off and on. This is very interesting guys because the extension of the bandwidth is more than double. Here was the 3db bandwidth of the amplifier and now it is here. And also we can see that we have a flatter response. Yeah, the passband flatness is much better. This green trace is the difference between the two traces and we can see here only the increase in bandwidth generated by the neutralizing technique. It's interesting because we have almost a perfect 6 dB per octave increase in the bandwidth, showing that we have neutralizing the first pole, the dominant pole of the normal configuration. Here we have the circuit, guys. You have a common emitter stage, okay, a BF199. The input comes unmatched and excites the base of the transistor. We have biasing and we have the A part is the output transformer that transform the 50 ohm system impedance of the output to a 200 ohm impedance at the collector of the transistor. 200 ohms is a common impedance to HF and VHF application. So we have one more winding on the output transformer in series with the neutralizing capacitance and we can adjust this capacitance to match the base collector capacitance of the transistor. So a small signal at the input will generate a downward signal at the output and we couple part of the power with the B winding that is inverted, the winding direction is opposite, so we generate here through this coupling capacitor a signal that helps the input driving current to charge and discharge the base to collector capacitance, neutralizing the Miller effect. For me, it's always incredible to see the difference in bandwidth generated by this simple technique. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and I see you in the next video.